What's up guys, it's Barry again. I'm uh, doing a compressor review today of a compressor I found recently for uh, a replacement to the old one I had. Uh, this is the Fortress Ultra Quiet from Harbor Freight. Um, I've had this compressor for about two months and the thing is awesome. Talk about overkill. I can actually disconnect my airbrush and run a pneumatic stapler, nailer, fill up the tires on my car. This thing is overpowered. I absolutely love this compressor. It has great features that I'm going to review right now. I will link all the details in the description. And here it is. The Harbor Freight Fortress Ultra Quiet 2 Gallon Double Compressor Airbrush Full Hobby Whatever You name it You can use it for it This compressor is awesome First off 2 gallon aluminum tank This is not a metal tank One of the big problems with compressors is the, um, the compressors run and they fill the tanks There's a lot of moisture involved in that So a steel tank uh, on a cheaper compressor, the, the moisture can fill into the bottom down here and just sit there and it starts to rust internally and eventually that rust will allow air to leak out through the rust in the bottom of the compressor or the tank, I'm sorry. This tank is aluminum, it's not going to rust. It also has this little petcock valve so that you can drain the tank easily. Just turn this lever straight down and it allows uh, air to come out, the pressure come out of the tank and it's in the bottom so it'll uh, drain that moisture out and get that out of there. One thing about this compressor is it's not heavy as far as compressors are concerned. It's uh, 37 pounds. But for a hobby compressor, one of those teeny tiny little ones you might get on uh, Amazon, uh, this one is uh, uh, quite a bit heavier. Um, so it does have a handle, you can see here, to help you pick it up and carry it around um, so that you can store it somewhere and then come back, get it, take it to where you need a hobby, bring it back. Um, so that's 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 one plus. Um, another thing is this tank, you can see it right here, it'll hold 135 pounds of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. That's enough pressure to run a, a pneumatic nailer or um, to fill up your car tire. No problem. We airbrush at about 20 pounds, uh, 35 on a day when you're having trouble when something's thick. Um, so that's plenty <laughs> that's way beyond what any hobby airbrush would normally do so that that's a, a huge plus that you have that extra amount of pressure on hand in this tank at any time um, this compressor is only 60 decibels 60 decibels is about how loud i'm talking right now um, when this compressor kicks on i can talk over it and i'm not i don't have to raise my voice and talk louder i don't have to do all that because um, it's it's relatively quiet as far as hobby um, compressors go. Um, there are quieter ones, but they cost a whole lot more. Um, some of the quieter ones can run over four hundred dollars, up into six hundred, a thousand dollars for a silent air compressor. They're, they might be forty decibels, but uh, the difference in the price um, it it really kind of makes it worth it. Um, another thing is this control panel is very nice on it too. You have the tank pressure on this side, which is clearly marked here. It says tank pressure. And on this side, you have your output pressure of what's going out of your compressor to your airbrush or whatever else you want to control. Um, so it's, it's easily, uh, cleanly marked right here. You can see exactly what pressure you're at here. And you have this giant valve in the middle for your output pressure. So you could twist this valve to adjust the pressure going out to your Airbrush in this case is what we're talking about, but anything you wanted to do, if you're trying to fill a tire or run a, a pneumatic nailer, then you just twist this till this pressure gauge is where you want it to be. Um, this, this compressor has two quick disconnects on it. And you may say, like my airbrush has got a quick disconnect on it. Well, yeah, you know, a lot of people buy those little quick disconnects to go on their airbrush um, so that they can have multiple airbrushes with this quick disconnect and they have on their air hose coming up to their airbrush, that little bitty hose, another, uh, the, the female into that quick disconnect. So you can just stick your airbrush on and they say, whoa, I changed that fast. Well, there's nothing faster than having two airbrushes connected at once. You don't have to change anything. You just pick up the other one and start spraying with it. Um, so that's cool. That's not really why I like this compressor. If I turn this thing just a little bit here, it has two large quick disconnects here. So if you were gonna go, let's say you were gonna go paint somewhere, 
uh, at your game store or something and you wanted to bring this compressor with you, you and your buddy, if you have airbrushes, could both connect to this compressor and paint at the same time at the hobby shop if you want to do like a paint session or something. So that's kind of cool to have two compressor or two airbrushes hooked to this compressor at once. But one thing I really like about it is um, it helps me situate it because most people don't have a ton of room to um, stack up this compressor in their house where they want to paint and where they want a hobby. So um, this makes it a little more flexible that you got one outlet that's facing forward and one outlet that's facing to the side because you may have to situate this thing in, uh, behind a dresser, in the bottom of a closet somewhere, in the floor, under your desk, anywhere. And you can, you can situate the, where this makes sense to be, where it fits best. And then you have two choices of where to connect your air hose. And that's what I like about that. Um, this compressor has dual compressors. That's a big deal. Um, most hobby compressors, only the highest end compressors that are really pricey have a dual compressor setup. There's a compressor here, there's a compressor here. What this does is, um, your normal compressor, little hobby compressor that you get that has that little bitty tank and it has the motor sitting on top of it, the compressor right here, it, um, it only has one motor to fill the tank. Well, this has two, and the, the reason this is so awesome is because these run at only half the RPM. So this one's running at half RPM, this one's running at half RPM, and there's two pistons that are filling that tank up there. So you get twice the effort at half the wear and tear on your compressors. If you got one compressor, it's spinning twice as fast as this one is to try to fill that little tank. And uh, over time, that thing running is what really wears it out, what really makes it go bad. Um, because there's no oil inside these compressors. They're, they're oil-less. They have like Teflon coated um, cylinders <clears throat> where the piston goes up and down and, and creates the pressure out to the tank. So the slower these run, the longer they'll last is really the best way to say it. And you have two of them, so they fill the tank up really quick. I think this tank fills from zero pounds to 135 in like 50 seconds, I think. I mean, it's really quick. And um, these will get it there fast. I was shocked at how fast these filled up the tank, honestly. So this is a big deal to have a dual compressor airbrush setup. Um, not any of the cheaper ones will have that. They'll just have one compressor, which means it's working twice as hard as these two are. Um, another thing about this uh, compressor that I, I really like <clears throat> is the design of it. You can see right here, there's, there's like a roll bar here to protect it if you, something fell into it, like it was in the closet or something, or you were carrying it through the house and you bumped into something, you're not gonna bang into anything important because you've got a full roll bar. You can see it's here and it goes under it. i turn this around. It's under the frame here. It goes at the bottom. It turns and goes up to be um, the handle on the top. It's all built in. It's got a welded frame down here <clears throat> with a piece of uh, sheet metal, thick sheet metal. That's uh, the carrier for all the internals and the compressors and everything. Um, it has a large industrial switch here. It's no joke. You can set it to automatic or off when it's on auto. It will fill the tank until it hits 135 pounds pressure in the tank. And then as you use it and the pressure comes down, when it gets to 90 pounds of pressure in the tank, it'll kick on automatically and fill itself back up to 135. Um, there is a smaller version of this compressor. This is the two gallon compression. Uh, conver this is the two gallon version of this compressor. There's a one gallon tank version that only has one quick disconnect. So you can only run uh, one air hose at a time. And, um, it's a little bit quieter. I think it says it's 58 decibels or something. And um, <clears throat> the tank would fill up faster, but you would only have half the amount of air to uh, airbrush from before it would have to kick back on and fill it up again. So um, I, I went for the bigger one. This one was uh, 159 when I made this video. I bought it. I've been using it for about two months now, uh, but $159 it's hard to find a good compressor with a tank um, 
for around that price and for the, and definitely not with two more, two compressors built on you just can't find that for that price so um that makes this compressor a deal um some of the the bad things about this compressor though uh it is heavy compared to other hobby compressors that you can get um they are usually a little lighter than this they're not as easy to move around um because they don't have a handle and things on them they just have the compressor on top of a tank um, so that's, that's one drawback. It's heavy. So if you had to move your compressor constantly, you're constantly moving it from room to room to room to, to uh, put it away because you just painted the dinner table or something. And, and then you need to move it out of that room and put it somewhere else to store it. Um, the handle's a plus, but the, the weight is kind of a drawback of it. I don't mind because I'm in my workshop right now. I have just a workshop that I can do whatever I want in. Um, so I keep this compressor out here. Um, this behind this wall is my family room so I don't want a loud compressor out here that would like disturb anybody or I couldn't run late at night after everybody goes to bed this definitely fits that bill you can't even hear it in that room on the other side of the wall and I put it against this wall it's it's under this workbench right here that it's sitting on uh, right up against the wall you can't hear it at all um, so that's that's one drawback is is, is that weight the other drawback is um, when you get this compressor, it actually doesn't come with uh, it doesn't come with the other half of this quick disconnect. So this is a quarter inch uh, disconnect decoupler. You can buy them at Harbor Freight where you buy this compressor. Um, they are dollar fifty, I think. They're they're really cheap. You can get a set of them, so you can hook it to multiple air hose tools. Um, tools air hoses i think that's how you say it anyway you can you can buy several so they just snap into this it's not a big deal um but there is a cost there this compressor also doesn't come with a moisture trap because you don't really need one if you're just running a pneumatic stapler or a uh, pneumatic uh, brad nailer or even a framing nailer you could run on this thing a big nailer to like build walls and stuff you could run off this compressor those don't really need a moisture trap um so it, it doesn't it doesn't come with one that's an extra piece you can buy a really heavy duty moisture trap at harbor freight for about 15 16 dollars i think but i gotta tell you i i don't use one of those giant moisture traps i, I don't use them uh, i use this um throwaway moisture trap and i've used it for years um it's called a desiccant filter and it has a medium in it that absorbs water um, with how little I use this for airbrushing and anybody, unless you're running assembly lines, airbrushing miniatures eight hours a day, or um, in my past I painted, you know, like motorcycles and cars and all kinds of stuff. Um, even then, I never needed a full-blown moisture trap. They, they're just kind of a little overkill, honestly, to be honest. But everybody buys them, you know, you got to get one. But um, if you want one, they sell them there. It's a little extra cost. Um, <clears throat> If, if I had one of those heavier duty um, moisture traps, because this has two quick dis disconnects coming off of it, I would probably get one of those tiny ones that goes right at your airbrush, like right where you uh, use your quick disconnect on your airbrush or your air hose connects to the bottom of your airbrush. I would probably just get one of those little inline ones right there. Um, but I don't, I don't use those. I use one that's uh, $2. You can buy a Harbor Freight. It's a little plastic one that just kind of screws on to the air hose. Um, I actually put my mail into the disconnect on the bottom of that. Um, here's my airbrush. And at the end of this air hose, on the other end, there's the mail end disconnect. It's right here. This snaps directly into the input here. And then this is that desiccant filter. It costs two, three dollars. It's not a big deal. I connect my disconnect right here to one side of it and I connect my air hose right here to the other side. This has a like a medium in it, almost like uh, like almost like a filter, but um, it, it absorbs moisture basically and no more moisture than this thing makes. The, 20 minutes I'm airbrushing you don't need that giant glass air filter unless your compressor is really bad about pumping out water and you don't want that compressor anyway for airbrushing so um, I just use these you can throw them away uh, 
a couple dollars. Um, so all in all, this compressor is um, the best bang for the buck for me. For $159, two gallon tank, aluminum tank, 135 pounds of pressure. And by the way, you use pressure to paint. So when you fill up a tank, there's volume and then there's the pressure that's inside of it. So if it's, if you had a 90 gallon, or I'm sorry, a 90 PSI tank that was two gallons <coughs> and a 135 PSI tank that's two gallons, the air is gonna last longer than the one that can hold more pressure because you're pulling from that pressure. So my old compressor was a three gallon tank that I was using, which was also from Harbor Freight, but it was really loud. And it only went to 90 pounds. So in a way they're almost the same. Yeah, I didn't really lose anything because this one will hold more pressure in it. And I'm spraying it, you know, 20 to 30 pounds of pressure with airbrush anyway. For the money, I don't think you'll find a better compressor. It does have drawbacks, it's heavy. You need to buy a, a uh, moisture trap, which a lot of the cheap ones come with already attached to them. Um, but those are not expensive. And the biggest pro of this compressor, in my opinion, is that it holds 135 pounds of pressure. So it'll airbrush a lot longer and it has twin compressors on it, which will make, they'll, they'll just live longer because they're not under as much stress as those little bitty um, single compressor airbrush setups. Um, so for that reason, there was no other choice for me. And I'm very impressed with this. I'm still uh, using it uh, all the time and I don't have any trouble with it. And it's smooth and reliable, quiet, um, and I don't move it around much. So I don't care that it's a little heavier, but it does have the handle so I can carry it around pretty easily. Um, if I had a setup where I needed to move it a lot, I think what I'd probably do is just build a little dolly for it, like out of wood with some wheels and mount this thing to it, or even just set it on it because it's pretty heavy. And then I would just roll it around from room to room instead of trying to carry it if I had to move it a lot. Um, but I'm, I'm lucky. I don't have to really move it around. Um, and that's it. I really like this compressor. And I think if you really weigh it out with some of the ones that are on the internet, um, you'll see that this one's better. It's just better for the money. You just get more for your money with this one. And, um, I wanted to tell you guys, because a lot of people just go to Amazon and they just look for the master's airbrush and say, wow, that's what I need. That one right there. And they don't realize that all these other options that they have typically that are louder, but this one's quiet. So check out this compressor if you're in the market for one. They do have multiple versions of this compressor. Like I said, there's a one gallon version. Um, that's 139, I believe right now, at the time of this video. And then they have like a five gallon version that's louder, that's a little more than this one, but probably a little too large to move around for most people. Um, it's more of a set it and forget it, you know, it doesn't move after that. So keep painting, keep doing your thing, keep making great looking miniatures, keep looking for bargains, find the right stuff. Don't just go with what somebody says is the right stuff. Do a little research. Um, watch professional airbrushers if you need advice about airbrushing. Honestly, watch the pro airbrush people. They're your best bet to get the right information. Like and subscribe. Hope you liked this video. I really felt like I needed to make it because so many, so many people have questions about um, what airbrush to buy, what compressor to buy. So here's my two cents. Appreciate it, guys. I'll see you in the next one.